Hello, this is Matt, and you're listening to Bluegrass Jam Along, the podcast for anyone and everyone who plays bluegrass. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another week on Bluegrass Jam Along. This is your Monday bluegrass briefing for the 13th of March 2023. Um, and the first thing I'm going to tell you is I'm going to try and say the word cool a lot less in this episode because I listen back to the first two and I use it all the time. So that is not cool. Uh, I'm clearly going to use it a bit because I can't help myself, but I'm going to use it less. Let's see if I can stick to that. Um, so, yeah, just general pod news first. A few bits and pieces to tell you about before we crack on with the rest of it. Um, so kicking off a new schedule, these Monday briefings are working out really nicely. So I've had some really nice feedback about those. So I'm going to keep these here every Monday. I'm going to do your weekly sort of roundup. Um, and then I'm going to put new episodes out on Wednesday. And the plan is one week it'll be a tune, a set of tunes. And then the following week it'll be an interview. And I'll keep swapping backwards and forwards and keep going. And there'll be the odd special thing in between um, that I'll fit in as and when I need to. But it'll be one week tune, one week interview, um, as much as I can stick to that. Um, and I think that'd be really cool. There you go. I've said it. I think that'd be really good because uh, having the briefing episodes means I can do all this stuff and there's a bit less chat in the tune episodes and you can get to the tunes quicker. Um, so that'd be helpful, I think, and gives me a chance to tell you other stuff I need to tell you in between. So what's coming this week? We've got this and then the first episode on a Wednesday is going to be this Wednesday and it's going to be an interview with John McEwen from the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. Now I did this for the Doc Watson 100th birthday episodes. Um, but I didn't use it all. There was some of it that wasn't that doc related and some of it that was just a bit too much to fit in. They ended up being nearly five hours long as it was. But it's really, really interesting stuff. John's a like really interesting guy. Will the Circle is a fascinating album and he's done lots of other stuff since that's it's really great too. So I thought I would put out the full interview. So that's coming out on Wednesday. Um, yeah, lots more sort of Will the Circle, Be Unbroken chats some just good stuff in there. So that's going to be really interesting. Um and then next up, I'm working on another of these special episodes. And it's going to be a celebration of 40 years since Tony Rice's Church Street Blues record came out. Because um, that was released in 1983. And I thought the 40th anniversary would be a good time to get some people together to chat about it. And some of them are people you'll have heard on the Dot Watson episodes. And there'll be some new people on that as well. Um, you know, more sort of relevant content for that. I've talked to Tim Stafford already. Um, I've talked to Brian Sutton. But I'm going to talk to... Caroline Wright, who co-wrote the book with Tim Stafford. I've got a couple of very, very exciting guests lined up for this one. And I haven't recorded either of them yet. And so I'm not going to tell you who they are in case it falls through. But there's a couple of really, um, I'm going to use it now because it's relevant, cool people coming up in that one. Um, So yes, more on that coming up. If you don't want to miss out on that, sign up to the mailing list. You can either go to the website and go to the bottom and there's a button there. Or you'll find it in the links on Instagram. Or you can just email me, matt at bluegrassjamalong.com, and I will send you an alert when the episode's out and when all the episodes are out. Um, yeah, uh, one more thing about the podcast before I carry on with the news stuff is I'm doing a bit of an experiment on YouTube. Um, some people really like the bluegrass stuff and the interviews, but they don't really do podcasts, and I that you know makes sense, nobody does. So I've put the two doc episodes and the Sierra Hill interview up on YouTube just as audio. Um, and I'll put a link in the show notes where you can find that. If you've got friends who like would be really interested in this sort of content, but they don't really do podcasts, send them a link to that and see how they got on with that instead. Um, just going to try it. If it works, then I'm going to stick all the other episodes up there too. It's just another way of people have been able to hear this stuff because I do know that not everybody is sort of podcast savvy or likes podcasts or you know wants to listen to stuff in that way. So I'm trying to get the content out in other ways if I can so as many people as possible can hear it. Uh, but that's it. The next section is the sort of general news and announcement stuff. And I, this is the way my brain works, so I'm finding silly titles for all of these. So this is now going to be called Church Street News. So Church Street News for the week of Monday the 13th of March. Um, IBMA Bluegrass Live have announced their lineup. Um, and some fab- fabulous people on that. Del McCory Band, uh, the Poe Ramblin' Boys featuring Bobby Osborne. The Kruger Brothers play Dot Watson. They're also running the Dot Watson 100th Birthday Jam at Millfest. So lots of Doc stuff for the Kruger Brothers. Um, loads of stuff. Go to the website. I'll put a link in the show notes. Go and see what's going on. Tickets go on sale to members in April. You might have seen an announcement in a couple of places that tickets are going on sale on March the 14th. But for various reasons, they've had to push that back. So tickets will be on sale to members in April. 
Um, but IBMA website has all the details. Um, so yeah, that's the main bit of news. Um, also, I mentioned to you last week that Ron Block has got a Banjo app coming out. It launched on Friday. Um, and there is a link you can go to that is in the show notes that will give you all the information on that. Uh, but that sounds like a really interesting thing and something that's going to build over time and be a great resource for people. So yeah, go and have a look and see. Go and see what's on there because that sounds great. Who doesn't want a banjo lesson from Ron Block? Um, apart from me because I don't play the banjo. But still, it looks really interesting. Um, and then one more bit of news that is not something that is like massively on my radar, but I know it's on a lot of yours, is that I saw that Kyle Cantrell was let go by Sirius XM. They've had a bit of a shake-up and let a lot of people go, um, including Kyle. And I know a lot of you are sort of sad about that. I know some of you are pretty angry about it. Um, and I don't know Kyle. I don't listen to Sirius XM over here in the UK, but I know how sort of loved he is by the community. Um, and that's like a big shake-up. So just like wanted to acknowledge that and wish Kyle well with whatever he does next. Um, yeah, it's quite a big shift. He's been doing that for a long time now. And he's sort of just part of the, the fabric of bluegrass. So good luck to Kyle with whatever comes next for him. Um, and that is it for news. So the next section is new releases coming up and out. Um, and obviously this needs a silly name too. So I'm going to call this section The Grass is New. What else? Um, so I've mentioned a couple of times that Mighty Poplar, the band that's got um, Chris and Noam from Punch Brothers, Greg Garrison from Leftover Salmon, um, Alex Hargill, he's this a bit of a bluegrass supergroup. Um, they've got a record coming out in a couple of weeks, but they've now got three tracks out for streaming. And I absolutely recommend you go and listen to these. They're brilliant. Um, three tracks are out now, Up on the Divide, A Distant Land to Roam and Grey Eagle. And it's just great stuff. It's really good. It's got that sort of solid traditional bluegrass feel, but it's also got a freshness and a little bit of an edge. And it's just really good stuff. Go and have a listen. Um, yeah, mighty popular. Fantastic stuff. And then also I noticed there's a new single from Missy Rains, These Old Blues with Danny Paisley. And I really enjoyed that too. Um, so go and check that out. That's a, a cool thing that's just dropped this week. And Missy's band features Tristan Scroggins who was one of my earliest guests on the podcast um, yeah so there's quite a lot of bigger stuff albums coming towards the end of the month but there's a couple of really interesting singles there that I thought I'd point out um, they're worth having a listen to and that's it for this week's releases so the next section is the just general stuff I've noticed this scroll on buddy section um, things I've spotted on Instagram essentially um, so yeah, a couple of things. One of them, a bit enigmatic. Um, Chris Thiele just posted something with a coming soon sort of message, and it just says Chris Thiele's acoustic camp for celebratory days and nights of acoustic music uh, exploration, coffee and cocktails. More information coming soon. I mean, all of those things sound great together. So that could be really interesting. Um, and if it's Chris Thiele, I'm sure it will be. Uh, Chris, if you're listening, you want to come and tell me about it, please do. I know Chris isn't listening, don't worry. Um, but yeah, that sounds really interesting. Um, and the second thing was, a, I saw a real a little video on Instagram from Jake Eddy, who has been on this podcast nearly as many times as I have. Um, I love Jake. He's really interesting. He's got a very sort of deep way of looking at stuff that's also just accessible and easily explained. And he just, yeah, he, he sort of, I don't know, he's got a really... Um, a really good way of explaining concepts on the guitar. And I'll put a link in the show notes. You don't need to be on Instagram or have an Instagram account to see it. It's just a video you can click and watch. But he's chatting about this idea that if you don't listen to much bluegrass, you don't have context. And without context, it's really hard for you to judge or assess what your playing is like. Like if you only know, if you only know three tunes, how is your ear developed enough to know whether you're playing them right or how you're playing or how they sound. And he sort of talks about this approach to learning 25 tunes before you even start thinking about some of that stuff. And I just thought it was really interesting. Um, and I've put a link to it in the show notes because I think it's worth a couple of minutes just to go and watch. Um, and if you're on Instagram, follow Jake because there's loads of really interesting content he puts out. Um, and I would sort of suggest like a lot a of people don't like social. You don't need to be posting stuff or particularly visible on Instagram. You can have a private account, but I find it an amazing place to find bits of news and what's going on in the world of bluegrass. It's sort of become my little morning newspaper almost. 
Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs>。So the last section、um, is just I'm going to just talk about a couple of bits I've been listening to this week, really,、um, just because I know I'm always listening out for new things and picking up on things other people are listening to. So I thought I'd just every week just tell you what's been in my ears, really. This section hasn't got a funny title yet because I couldn't think of one.、Um, But I will, or if you've got one, send me something. I, send me, I could do with, if any of these titles aren't funny enough, send me your suggestions. I'd love, love to hear them.、Um, but yeah, just in my ears this week, really, just talking to John McEwen for the doc episode, he talked about a solo recording of his called String Wizards that、um, he said it was one of the things he was really proud of that he'd done sort of since the Circle album. And I went and listened to that. It's great. Really enjoyed that.、Um, and I hadn't heard that before, didn't know about that. So that's really, really good. I recommend that heartily. Um, and as a result of chance, John, I just went back and listened to Will the Circle Be Unbroken again, and just so good. I mean, every time I listen to it, I, go, I forget about it sometimes, and I go a couple of years without listening to it, and then you stick it on, and it's just still, just still such a good record.、Um, and also, The Crow, the record he did, the Grammy winning record he did with Steve Martin, I dug that out again and had a listen. So I went on a little bit of a, a wander through some John McEwen stuff, which was really good fun.、Um, but the other thing is, I went to the session that I go to. Um, and a guy called Dave Marshall runs our local session.、Um, hello, Dave, if you're listening. And Dave was away for a couple of months.、Uh, he'd been ill and missed a couple of the sessions and came back. And his first one back, he played us, he taught us all four songs off the latest Tim O'Brien record、um, called He Walked On. And、um, yeah, I didn't know the record, hadn't I? I'd listened to it. I've got, got and listened to lots of Tim O'Brien stuff. And just, you know, sometimes you don't get around to listen to a record, and I hadn't. And I'm so glad that he played them. He did four songs. Off that record.、Um, and it's, so I went and listened to the record, and it's great. You know, such a good record. And I'm sure you all know that, but sometimes things just pass you by. And that was one of them with me.、Um, so yeah, that was really good as well. But that's it for this week.、Um, same again next week. 10 to 15 minutes of rambling about general bits and pieces and news and things I've seen and the strange contents of my head.、Um, just a few reminders at the end. Just sign up to the mailing list if you want. Updates, there's details in the show notes.、Um, if you want to know what's going on, I will send you an email every week.、Um, there's also a list of interviews there. It's easy to lose them sometimes amongst all this. 260 something episodes now,、um, and they get a bit lost. There's a list of the interviews on the website. I'm working on a new website as we speak, not as we speak, I'm recording as we speak, but around the time we speak. And it's going to have a feature on it where you can sort the episodes. So, you'd be able to just look at interviews, just look at the tunes, just look at jam along tracks,、um, search particular tunes. I'll, I'll make it all work. I'm still sort of fighting a little bit with that, but I'm getting there.、Um, and I think that'll help people. And there'll be little players on the site, so you can just go and listen to episodes on there as well.、Um, so, that's coming at some point. I will update you on that. As always, don't forget if you're listening on the Spotify, you only get the interviews, you're missing all the jam tracks and the backing tracks too. So,、um, to、do come and check out the other platforms and see what there is. And that's it.、Uh, if you want anything featured in these episodes, if you're a band, if you're a label, if you're a festival,、um, if you have some exciting bluegrass news you want to share with us all, do let me know. It's just matt at bluegrassjamalong.com.、Um, but I'll be back next week with more of the same. Have a great week and look out for the John McEwen episode on Wednesday. Happy picking. <laughs>「Bluegrass Jamalong」is proud to be sponsored by Collings Guitars and Mandolins, making some of the finest guitars and mandolins in the world since the 1970s. Visit collingsguitars.com and find out why.